guys, this is Inka. Welcome back. Today, I am going to be making some pineapple cakes, also known as phony su. You guys have probably seen me rave about pineapple cakes before, specifically in that Worth It episode where we went to Sunny Hills, one of my favorite places in the city. Pineapple cakes, I think, really are like the quintessential Taiwanese pastry. Everybody loves it. Every time I go, I have to buy a couple of boxes back to give my friends, but also to give myself. It has this like wonderful buttery shortbread crust on the outside and then on the inside you get that like sweet and slightly tangy filling. Since I love it so much, I figured why not try and make it myself at home? This way I can eat it whenever I want and so can you guys. With that said, let's get started. So the first thing we have to do is to make the pineapple filling, which is a little bit time consuming, but the good thing is you can just make a huge batch and then just put it in the fridge and use it whenever you want. I've already cut up my pineapple. Maybe I shouldn't have used a yellow bowl, but this is a whole pineapple. It smells really sweet because mine was super ripe, which means I probably don't have to add that much sugar, but what I'm gonna do is actually chop it up. I'm gonna use my food processor to save some time. And also, usually you know how for like the core of pineapples, we don't use that. You do wanna keep it this time. Don't throw the core away. My food processor is super mini, so I'm going to have to do this a couple times. I like it better when it's slightly chunky and not too smooth, so I'm just going to go with the chop option. We're just going to keep repeating this stuff. So now I have a bowl of pineapple puree. The next thing I'm going to do is actually to strain the juice out because we need to reduce this to a point where there's no liquid left. You can also just use a strainer, but basically this step is to help make the drying process a little more efficient. Squeeze it out. Over here is where I'm going to put my pineapple. I'm just going to keep on repeating this process. take some time, but this is what the pineapple looks like after it's strained. You can see that there's not much liquid left. As for the liquid that I did strain out, do not throw this away because this is literally... This is some super good pineapple juice. You can drink it as is, you can make pineapple slush. So definitely keep this. You know what, I'm actually just gonna drink some right now. Oh my god, this is so good. That's it, that's the end of the video. Let's get back on track. So now let's get to frying up our pineapple. I'm just going to add this in. So traditionally for this step, maltose candy is added into the pineapple, but because I figured that's an ingredient that might not be as easy for most of us to find, I'm gonna substitute that with corn syrup and also some brown sugar. My pineapple is super sweet, so I'm probably not gonna add as much sugar. I'm adding some dark muscovado sugar because it's the most similar to Heitang, and I love the flavor that gives to dessert type things, but you could totally just use normal brown sugar. Oh, it smells so good. Essentially, we're just caramelizing the pineapple. We want it to become super sticky. Also adding in a pinch of salt to keep stirring so it doesn't burn. It's been like around 25 to 30 minutes, and my pineapple has dried up considerably. Around this time is when I'm going to add in a little bit of corn syrup and also a squeeze of lemon. This can help bring out the sweetness. I'm also adding in one tablespoon of butter. This can help give the filling an even richer flavor. There's a reason why this filling is good because there's a lot of really good stuff that goes on in here. Tasting it a little bit to see if I need to adjust it. So I think I'm gonna add a little bit more brown sugar just for more of that brown sugar flavor. One of the good things about this is that it's never too late to adjust the flavors. If you want it to be more sweet, you can always add more sugar at the end. If you want it to be more tangy, you can add more lemon. Then a few more minutes and this is what my filling looks like now. The color is a darker brown, almost a caramel brown. Pretty much no liquid left, so it's ready to go. It's crazy, right? That's a whole pineapple 
and it's been reduced to this like super concentrated puree. This now needs to cool completely. Once it's cooled down, the texture is going to be completely different. Let's get started on the pastry. The crust outside is pretty much like a shortbread of sorts. So what that means is that there's going to be a lot of butter. That's what's going to give it that like flaky melt in your mouth texture. And actually, I'm going to be starting with butter. Put that in a bowl. It's super important that this has to be room temperature because we have to pretty much whip it until it becomes really fluffy. Good to go. I'm going to sift in my powdered sugar. Scrape down the sides. Next up is our egg yolks. If you use only egg yolks, it's going to help give it that like extra flaky texture. This is the reason why it tastes so good. Look at how creamy that is. So the next few things I'm going to add might be a little surprising. Trust me, there's a reason why we're adding them. First up, I'm gonna add some milk powder. I'm also going to add in some cheese powder. This is what's going to give it that like slightly savory kick, which again will help bring out the sweetness. You won't actually taste the cheese, I promise. Some condensed milk. I you know there's like a lot going on, but again, these are the things that will help give it that like an extra depth of flavor. And super important for this part, we just want to now start folding it all in together. So you don't want to over mix it. Last thing I'm adding is just some cake flour and salt. Making sure that all of it is combined into a dough. Smells really nice. It actually does smell sweet and savory. Also, this part is totally unnecessary, but I like zesting in some lime just to give it a little bit of a zestier flavor. I am now going to just wrap it up, let it rest on the countertop for like half an hour. Not in the fridge, because I don't want it to harden up. And while the dough is resting, I did some cleaning up, and now I can go back to our filling and divide this up into little balls of goodness. Because I'm trying to make these as uniform as possible, I'm actually going to weigh each one out. Make sure that they're the same size. A ratio of around three to four seems good to me. It really depends on how big you want your pineapple cake to be, but as long as you keep this ratio, it should be good. Fillings are all portioned out and shaped, so I'm going to let this chill in the fridge for a little bit while we go back to the dough. Essentially with the dough, I'm just doing the same thing of portioning it out making sure that each one has around the same amount of dough. Okay, dough is now also portioned out. Now that I have both of these divided up, I can finally get to combining. This is the way I like to do it. I like to roll this in between my hands and then my bowl of dough here, I'm just going to press it down. And this is why it's important not to chill it in the fridge because if you do, it's gonna become too hard. Right now it's very, very pliable. And then we're gonna put the pineapple filling in here, like so. Gently push up the sides of the dough, like that. It's like wrapping a dumpling. And what I like doing is just to roll it again between my hands. Now we have our little dough ball. You can see that the surface is smooth and there are no cracks left. So what I did was I went out to buy these pineapple molds. They're super cute. They're kind of big though. And then just these little square molds. I'm gonna start with the pineapple one first and we're just gonna fill it up as much as you can. It's okay if it expands, it's still gonna keep its shape, but this way we can make sure that there will be zero cracks. This stuff will be time consuming, but it is worth the effort. This is what it looks like. You do want to fill it up as much as you can, and then basically you're just gonna do the same thing for these pineapples. Pineapple cake 
cakes are done. I just want to show you guys what they look like now. Pineapple shape. Really, really happy that it actually came out looking like a pineapple. It's a little brown around the edges, but I'm just really glad it kept its pineapple shape. This is super cute. I also did the more traditional shapes. These are the ones that I grew up seeing and I love how they look. They really do look like the ones I used to have, so I am pretty pleased. It smells super, super buttery. It's like shortbread, but like even more fragrant. But the most important thing is that you do not want to eat these pineapple cakes right away. Right when it comes out of the oven, it has like a harder, crispier crust. And that's why you actually want to put this in the fridge for one or two days before you have your first bite. This one is the one I made yesterday. You can see that it's less crumbly. There's more hold to it. It's more dense. The butter has had time to set and it just blends together with the pineapple super well. Think of all that time we spent cooking it. It's been reduced so then all the flavor is in this one little bite. So please do give this a try. I would love for you guys to be able to enjoy this at home. I cannot wait to see your results. I will see you guys next time. Bye!